get Cab Calloway on it? Can you get it? That's my patty way she's going to be on it. By the way, how is your father? But I want to know what happened. Does it bother you? To the break room, classic film fans, it's tea time for a coffee break. <laughs> Welcome to the coffee house. I hope you have your coffee. As you can see, I already have mine. My lipstick print shows up before I do. Um, you know, it's funny. When I was a kid, I always would see like adult women um, with their coffee with lipstick prints on it. And I was like, ooh, I can't, I can't wait to do that. And now, now sort of when I see it, I'm like, oh. Gosh, I don't want to smudge it off, but okay. Anyhow, that's my 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 brief introduction <laughs> into the story. So I hope you guys have had a good week, and I hope that you are staying safe, well, and healthy. And now let's get into another Fashion Friday, a la Cinema Coffee. Um, I have my, you know, I have my 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 tumbler. Um, this was a tumbler that. Can I say Starbucks? I guess I can. Um, that they, you know, every year they do some sort of like, if you're the first, like while supplies last, you get uh, a free tumbler. And every year I would want to get it. Like, because before life happened, I was an avid Starbucks person. It's, I'm not even good. It's like a whole story, which I'm not even going to, maybe another cinema coffee talk since we, we talk coffee. Um, and, Every year I'd want to get it and every year I'd always strike out like it's like when I oh they sold out at such and such time or if you would have just like this person just you know they got the last one so this year this this past this few months ago I guess I think it was before the holidays or around the holidays when they did it I really was just I was adamant that I wanted to get it and then uh, there was another part of me that was like, you know, I've tried and tried and I can never get there on time. It's just, it just doesn't work for me. So I waited and waited later than what I had normally ever been. I kind of went in, you know, when you go in like, I, 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 I'm doing this deliberately because I know good and well, it's not going to be here. So I'm, I'm just going to test it. Went in and I said, do you guys have any more of the tumblers just already waiting for the, no, we're out. And then she looked like, um, I think, and I didn't like, you know, don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Cause then, like, now I'm, I'm like, wait, okay, let me just, let me, let me calm down. And she's like, I think, I think there's like one, one or two more left. And the way she was looking behind like the counter and kind of looking like I, I, I saw it just a little while ago, and sure enough, there it was. So I, I don't know if this was the last one or the second to last one, but either way, I was, I was cheesing, like, like my cheeks hurt. I was, I was smiling so, so hard because it's like, it, it took so long. You know, like when Paul Newman finally won the Oscar and he was, he said something, I'm paraphrasing here, something to the effect like, like when you're chasing, he's like, it's it's like when he, if you're chasing a beautiful woman and then you finally catch up with her and it's like, never mind. <laughs> but in this case, I was like, I was, I was very happy and I was taking photos inside the coffee shop and everything. I was just really happy. And then, you know, fast forward so many weeks ahead and I was not able to use it as I had intended, you know, having coffee dates with friends and coffee dates with my dad, which have, you know, after losing my mom, that became very, very important. And I always looked forward to that, um, us doing that. That's, that's part of the Starbucks story, which we'll save for another day, another coffee break. But, you know, and even self dates, self care, what I call self care, coffee shop trips, just by myself, um, working on something just to, to get out, um, and, and go, wasn't able to use it as I intended, so I'm using it here with you guys. So we'll we'll have a coffee date together. With so bring your bring your favorite coffee mug. Show me your favorite coffee mug. Um, if you follow me on social media, show me what your favorite coffee mug is. I have an assortment. Coffee is like a big thing around here. So as you can see, there are two dresses behind me. Two dresses, one actress, one film. I'm thinking you can kind of see 
both of them and if you're a classic film fan you're already looking like I know where this comes from. I sh I, I'm very proud of these two pieces and I'm very excited. I was very excited to get to these. Like every week I'm like, next week I'm going to do it. Next week I'm going to do it. And I'm, I'm finally to next week. So here they are. Yes, Myrna Loy, the Thin Man. These two dresses were created and inspired by the Thin Man with Myrna Loy. You know, I tried to do some research on that. I remember when I wanted to create these these dresses this one came first and this one came second and we'll get into that in a little bit but um i remember doing some research and at the time i'd have to look through my notes because i was writing everything down i and don't quote me on this i, I may have to look it up again because i haven't looked it up since then that i think it was it like supposedly they're they're the the dress is is gone now like the, the, no one can find the dress or it's been you know trashed I hate to use that oh, I hate to use that word with anything classic cinema like that's been thrown out um but I remember reading somewhere I think they said it was green and white because when I came up with wanting to do this like with me when I watch classic cinema uh, particularly I'm looking at it as Yes, as a, a, a carryaway film, comfort films, I'm in love with them films, but in the back of my mind, there's always something working, like even if it's just for my professional life or my personal life, like I can use that. Like that's, that's, that's good. I mean, you know, if it's anything from that, the, the, um, you know, the, the turban with Hedy Lamar. oh my gosh, I like, that was a thing. I, I went out at ASAP, like, okay, how can, let's do this, like, like asking, asking for guidance, like, now, how can, let, let me create this look, it, I can't pull it off, like, Hedy Lamar, so I, I let that die, but um, when I look at something, the, the workings of the back of my mind is hairstyle, or makeup, or wardrobe, and when I saw that outfit, the first person I went to was, you know, my mom, and I was like, hey, do you think we can do this? And she kept looking at it. She's like, I think we can. So we looked at every possible photo that I can find of it. I tried to find front, back, any any photo I can find of the dress, any information I can find on the dress. And uh, ended up just, uh, at the time, I, I did not have the Thin Man on DVD. I did not have those on DVD. So I ended up buying it so I can, like, so we can hit pause and we can like really study the structure of the dress and try to uh, create it best we could not you know verbatim but as best as we could to recreate the spirit of it and because I couldn't find that peppermint kind of color stripe uh, in the in the print I mean in the fabric that I wanted I don't I can't even remember how this came about but for some reason for us it worked uh, and how this happened you know what I really I really I really couldn't tell you because it was I, I use that word a lot on the cuff <laughs> like when you have a mannequin and you have some fabric and determination you just start draping things until it looks right and it's like pin it down and sew it up so that's how that came about. Then later, more more recently, before I, I lost my mom, we found this print and we both thought the same thing. Like somehow, I think this could, like, let's do, not that we weren't happy with this one, but we were like, hey, let's let's try it again. So we, 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 we tried it again and did it, did it again and used this for uh, a show and who knew the next day um i received uh, a phone call go to the go, go pick up a newspaper and there it was on the front page of the news paper and i was just i was floored you know and then of course you know in today's society like newspapers aren't really a thing so it was a matter of driving around trying to find 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 a newspaper and then once we found them like grabbing as many as we could but it was also uh on digital print so we were able to see it online as well so that was very exciting Myrna Loy and and William Powell are kind of a big deal in this household I'm 
pretty sure it's the same with any classic film fan you talk to. It's kind of funny because even recently, um, my dad, he's like, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't even, I think maybe it was on one night and he was like, you have, you, you have though. And I was like, oh yeah. And I, this one is special to me because this is the one that um, I, I bought when, you know, my mom and I were going through trying to make the dress and I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to put my coffee down for, for one, one second to show you. So I, I've, I've let my dad borrow this one because this is, this is, I think, I think for all of us, this one is probably my favorite and a family favorite. Although I do like the one, the, the second one, Another Thin Man with, with James Stewart. I'm, I'm very partial with, to that one as well. But, um, anyhow, let him borrow it and yeah, <laughs> haven't gotten it back yet, but, but it's all right. We're all, we're all, we're all Thin Man fans, right? And we're right, sis. So it's, it's okay. It's okay. Um, and the same thing with, with Topper Returns. Like, I haven't gotten that back. But it's, it's, all, it's fine. It's good. I know where it is. It's in good hands. And as long as it's in good hands, I'm okay with that. So that, that one is, is, is special to me because that's the print that we came up with. How can we, how can we do this? How can we create the Myrna Loy dress. So I will have pictures of these if I haven't, when I edit this, if I haven't already showed them while I was talking, um, edit them in that you can see the front and the back of them. But this one has also been used for photo shoot publications. So both of them have their, their own backstory to, to tell. So the thin man lives on, the, the Myrna Loy dress lives on. For me, Anything with William Powell and Myrna Loy is okay in my book. They did what, four, was it 14, 14 films together? Six of them being Thin Man, part of the Thin Man. And like I said, the first, the first two I'm partial, the first one I'm partial to because of the dresses, but I really do like, I like the second one um, with James Stewart. Let me know what your favorite Thin Man film is, which one is yours. And as far as Myrna Loy and William Powell together, Outside of the Thin Man, you know what? I'm going with Love Crazy. That's probably my favorite one. Although I like Live with Lady because we get a little bit of Gene Harlow too. And anytime you get Gene Harlow added to the lineup, I'm okay with that. But I, I, I want to say Love Crazy is probably, probably my favorite, my favorite one. Um, or you know what? Don't, yeah, it's, gosh, it's hard to pick because now I'm thinking, I, and the, and I like Manhattan Melodrama as well. I mean, that one I discovered, I'm probably in, a, in the same boat with a lot of people with uh, seeing Public Enemies and then finding out the whole, and the thing is, I'm just, I don't know why I'm shocked. I didn't know that before I watched the film because I'm pretty, I'm pretty savvy and pretty versed on finding like, history on the gangster period with Al Capone and John Dillinger and Bonnie and Clyde and um, I, I was shocked that I didn't know you know I knew how John Dillinger died I've seen the photos but I was shocked that it didn't I I, I missed the whole Manhattan melodrama was the film that he went to to see the last film he went to see and when I saw that in the film where he's watching Manhattan Melodrama, it's funny, of course, everyone looks to me like, Do, have you seen this? And I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> this was new. And I think I remember at the time, don't hold me to this. And if, if you guys have a, a, a memory as mine, let me know if, if you remember this. But I think it was Robert Osborne who talked about it. Um, when they aired it, because I think it was like talking about how it was John Dillinger's last film. And so of course I researched everything. Like I got books and, and any kind of maga, cause you know, it was like, like rehashed, like now more stories were coming out and I was watching biographies and everything and just trying to piece the whole puzzle together. And to think that, you know, Manhattan melodrama was, was, wrapped up in that whole story. So I'm very partial to Manhattan melodrama and then, you know, James Wong Howe, which is one of my 
favorite cinematographers ever and the way that he shoots that whole film and then the ending in particular it really really gets me every time just from that moment and I if you haven't seen it you know you know me but um that whole I'll put it this way that whole ending sequence from and I, I don't know how to word it without giving it away because I don't want to give any locations on it. But if you've seen it, you, I'm, I'm thinking you know what I'm, I'm talking about from the dice throwing. I'll put it that way. If you're, if you're real savvy on the film, if you've, if you've watched it enough, you know what I mean by the dice throwing. From that point on to just carrying you out to the end, that I like that. There was something kind of um, Mata Hari-esque about it a little bit. Um, and snap, that's probably giving too much away. I might have to edit, might have to edit that out. But let me know what your favorite Myrna Loy and William Powell uh, film is. And you know what? I almost missed out on William Powell. I hate to keep telling you guys my mom's stories, but, um, William Powell and Norma Shearer, both of them, I was kind of sleeping on until my mom was like, Gosh, she looks so debonair. And that was, you know what? With my cinema coffee, since we're cinema coffeeing, um, is that a word? Okay. <laughs> since, we're, since we're cinema coffeeing, um, we're going to make that a word. We're going to make it official. Um, that was the first piece that I wrote on how just my natural love for classic cinema since I was a child was developing. And then how along the way, as I became more developed in it and more in love with it, sharing it out loud for anyone who would listen, family, friends, hey, do you, like, I heard someone say something, like, oh, you, hey, let's talk. Like, um, from that, because I something a lot of times I would say, you know, you're not interested in it, like, because I'm trying to give, you know, and he was married to so-and-so, and then, you know, she did this film with, with them, and then later, at the end of their career, they did this, and then I'm like, you know, no one's really interested in that, and to hear my, my parents saying, no, like, we're interested, because we can't see how we grew up with a lot of this stuff, and here you are coming, you know, Johnny come lately, and you know about it. From that, from me talking about it so much, watching it so much, no one else had a choice in the house. No one else had a choice. So my mom would look, she said, he's, he's real debonair. And I'm like, really? You think so? And then it's like, it was like a, like, like the veil had been taking, taken away from my eyes. And I'm like, oh, yes, he is. And I, I just instantly fell in love with William Powell and then Norma Shear, it was it was her haircut. My mom was like, that's she would say that's an expensive haircut. That was my mom, she was also um as well as being an oil painter. I think I've told you guys that. If not, I know I post it quite often. Um on top of being an oil painter, self taught, uh she was a beautician. So she would say, That's an expensive haircut whenever she'd see a haircut that was what we call laid real nice. She was like, That's that's an expensive haircut. The way that Norma Shear's hair is, you know, in that, that early thirties period, she's like, I love how her hair is cut. It just works for her face, it works for her features. And I kept looking at it like, You've got something, okay, that works. And there there I was. Norma Shearer and William Powell were added to the addition, right? So that's my cinema coffee take on on the thin man and um since okay since last time we met because i'm I'm gonna break away a little bit from Fashion Friday, although we've really been more cinema coffeeing um yeah, that is totally gonna be a word <laughs> since we last met, I have some news to share with you guys now, if you follow me on social media, you already know this this news I had been expecting something this week no I'm sorry that not this week gosh time is like there is there is no time um I was expecting this last I was expecting this like maybe to arrive around the 25th or so and two days before that Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but um, this is 
an original contact sheet with Marlon Brando for guys and dolls. And I still have it in its protective sheet because it is very, very fragile. Just when I open the protective sheet, just a little bit, um, you can tell how fragile it is. So more than likely, I'm going to I'm going to frame it in the protective sheet or put it in some um, somewhere safe with the rest of my collection because I have some other things uh, with him as well that are too fragile to really do anything with so I, I keep them tightly guarded and if they can handle it I'll scan them or I'll take a photo of them and then if if not then I, I have a, a way of still being able to display it to, so at least I can see it without touching it but to to know me I say that a lot is to know Guys and Dolls is my favorite Marlon Brando film and I'm not talking about performances I'm just talking about film in general um, although my nickname comes from a streetcar named Desire, Stella, that's a bit of a long story as well. If you have read my Cinema Coffee piece, it won't be new to you, or if you've seen me talk about it, it won't be new to you. It's kind of a long story, but to make a long story short, I watched A Streetcar Named Desire so much. I, outside of Gilda, I think it was played more than any other film I have ever played in my life and that's saying something because I can hit repeat on a DVD quickly and it got to the point where when he was screaming hey Stella family and friends were like again like we just heard that like a little over an hour ago like this is on repeat so it quickly crept up being Stella and my mom Blanche or vice versa whoever was calling who the 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 other person that person was Stella and whoever answered would always answer yes Blanche so that that became our nicknames Stella and Blanche so we were both Stella and we were both Blanche which I haven't heard now in a in a long time because she's the only one who calls me that and it was cute because whenever friends and family would hear that and even we've even had people in the store that would hear that and was like is that from that that Marlon Brando film like you know they may not know the name of it but that were you screaming and we're like, yeah, <laughs> that's us. But that's where that came from. But Guys and Dolls is so special to me. I, I have already done, I think I've done a chat with you guys on this before, I think maybe last year, that that's my traditional birthday watch. Every year on my birthday in June, uh, I watch Guys and Dolls and I have Dulce de Leche ice cream. I refuse to let that change this year. I, I One way or another, I'm gonna have my Dulce de Leche ice cream and of course I'm gonna watch Guys and Dolls. So that's that's nothing's changed. So my birthday my birthday came early with this. So I was quite I was quite quite happy. I was quite excited. So and maybe you guys can help me out. Let me know what, what you do. I'm going through two kind of like the things I'm doing for like comfort watches or comfort reads or comfort time, self care, me time, the things I'm doing for that have kind of like they're they're kind of been put on pause. I have a book right now that I, I've told you guys I am an avid reader. There's never I there there's never a length of time where I don't have a book in my hand. It, it's like as soon as I'm finished with one, I'm starting on another. Around I think around this time last year, I had at least five books that I was rotating with, and <laughs> I got the look like is she is she serious? Like I thought. She had a different book, like, yeah, I multitask with my book reading. But I I have a book that I have been reading, and I don't want to give the name of it, because it is good. It is a good book, and it is a well, well-received book, and it is good. But for some reason, I can't, I've, I've reached over half of it, and for some reason, I can't get past it. And I, I bring it to my where, where where I read like my comfort zone reading space every night and I can't get past like that page I don't know what's going on and it's the other day I'm like okay this really doesn't happen to me so do I just shelter like do I just like go through it 
anyway, just force myself to go through it? Or do you put it down and pick up another book that you want to read, start with that and then come back to it? Because it's it's like it's information. So I I don't want that information to leave like where I'll forget like, oh, OK, that's, you know, I, so help me out. But what what do you guys do when that happens? That happens to you? Because the same thing is happening to me with my filmography challenge. I told you guys that I'm going through a Yetchislav Tikhonov, which I told you guys from War and Peace. I'm going through his filmography and I told you guys that I was not going in any, any specific order. I I if anything, I would say I was starting off with his younger work. Again, no no order. It wasn't like, I think his, fir his first film was 1948. So it wasn't like, okay, I'm going to go to 1948 up until his last film, which I think was 2006, which we'll get to in a second because I have, I, I, did, I did look at a little of that, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, but I, I was kind of spotting around like 50s, 60s, 70s, then maybe back 60s. And then so I was spotting around a little bit. And now it's more spotting around with his later work. And I'm just I'm just so disappointed. And I vented this out with with a coffee talk friend uh, a few weeks ago that I'm just a little disappointed because he's a very good actor that it seems like in his later career, it's just they put him behind a desk. And again, I, I, I don't speak, I, I don't speak Russian. Um, so watching all of these with no subtitles, I have no idea what's going on. So this is only assumption that I'm assuming this is what's going on. But it seems like uh, most of the time he's just sitting behind the desk and reviewing uh, footage for something and 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 giving this is what should happen and I'm just sort of like so so you reach a certain age and people think you have you have nothing to offer and that kind of really frustrated me so I'm I'm still continuing on but I'm just disappointed in the way that it's and from what I have researched because I have been doing a lot of research uh, on him English and like English research and then trying to translate uh, which some of the translations may not may not be great so i I'm, i have to read and reread and piece together and kind of pair it up with what i've read with the actual english text on his life and in career but it seems like he he was getting tired of his career later in life and I think it was the 90s he just stepped away from it and then came back I think in 2000s like in the in the early millennium and started doing films again which I did that's where I was like we'll get to that later I did I think it's 2006 I did watch a little of that and then I got kind of like like let me let me wait because the the very first film he did I'm waiting until I finish my filmography I, I want to make that one my last film and I think the reason I stopped with the last film he did I want to make those two the last that I see in his filmography uh the filmography challenge that I have just because it, it's kind of in a sense it's kind of I was I had this conversation before it's kind of sad sometimes when you're going through a filmography watch on a particular actor I, I do it with actors I've done it with directors where I usually I do start from beginning to end usually um, just my memory will like work better in that chronological order uh, to store away for 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 a rainy day but there are a lot of times there are a fair share of times where I just don't go in any particular order but I do do it with actors, directors, cinematographers. It just depends on who who am I really trying to key in on and, and, and study their work and visit their work. But it sometimes can get sad when they're no longer with us and you know how they left here and seeing like, gosh, like, like all of us, you, you know, you didn't know then what was waiting for you ahead. And I, I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into that for this is like, cinema coffee chat but I'm sure some of you guys may may uh-uh <laughs> uh -uh. 
Um, I'm sure some of you guys may may know where I'm where I'm at with that. So I'm gonna make those two my last my last film watches for him. But if you guys are going through any kind of filmography watches or you have done one in the in the past that you enjoyed or you're planning on doing one or you have one that you just recently did, let me know who you have. I think one of my favorite ones, actually, I think who really started me to do that was Preston Sturges. I think that was the first um, person I can think of that made my the rest of my classic film career as I'm going to start watching whether it's director, producer, actor, watching their filmography. Although a lot of the actors I had seen most all of their filmography without it being a challenge. It wasn't just it wasn't a challenge. It was just something you you were doing. And then when you look back on it, it's like, yeah, I was like, like, zooming in on that particular actor like Cary Grant comes to mind which just when I thought I had seen every Cary Grant film one came up on me Amazing Adventure which I have done a cinema coffee piece on saw that in it like in a DVD bin and was kind of confused because I said, you mean there's a Cary Grant film I haven't seen? Now, mind you, this has been some some years ago, so I, I just bought it just because it's Cary Grant. The print was not great. It was one of those, you know, in the $4 bin, you know, the bin. Um, so the print was not great, but I did write a cinema coffee piece on it. I will have that linked below for you guys um, to, to, to read if you're interested. But, and you know what, I'm always surprised by the people, I know this is like going random, the people who don't know what Gunga Den, who have not seen Gunga Den, cause, because when I wrote the piece, I mentioned Gunga Den, so I, I had made a GIF, I say GIF, I had made a GIF for it, and when I posted it, people were questioning, like, where, where is this movie, is that Scary Grant, where is this movie from? And I just thought Gunga Din was so well known. I was just sort of shocked. So if you haven't seen Gunga Din, please, please do that. You will, please do that. Douglas Fairbanks Jr., Victor McLaughlin, Cary Grant. That needs to be like a priority piece. But bought, saw it in the bin, bought it. And it's funny because the it seems like the films that you find in the bin or at random places or some of the best films to watch that happened to me speaking of douglas fairbanks jr that happened to me with young at heart it was in the bin and but this one was like a donation bin which i was shocked to see anything like that um it dvds that people just didn't want anymore you know like kind of like at the library never sleep on those never walk past those because you never know what you're going to find because for me on that particular day it was young at heart that was the one that stood out for me great condition i was i, I ugh. if i knew i was going to be talking about it i, I would have brought it over here so you guys could see it, but it's Douglas Fairbanks Jr. and Paulette Goddard and the Wombat. <laughs> I mean, yes, Roland Young is in it as, as well as Billy Burke, It, but it is, oh my gosh, and Janet Gaynor, where am I going with this? Please watch Young at Heart, because when I saw it in the bin, the, of course, you know, Sinatra fan, the first thing I thought was like, is this a take on the Doris Day and Frank Sinatra, which, you know, is the remake from John Garfield and Priscilla Lane. But I was like, is this another take on that? And then I, all I could hear is the song and see the film, which I love, I love both. So I, 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 I got it, brought it home, watched it and fell in love with it. Please, if you have not seen Young at Heart, make that something, something you watch during self quarantine. That is like, I need to do that. Why haven't I done that? And I need to write a cinema coffee piece on that one because I have like a very large story uh, uh, on Young at Heart. So anyhow, I know, again, I'm rambling on, but when it comes to cinema, it's hard to not talk about it and not and not be enthusiastic about it. So here we are. Every week when I do these, I don't come planned with, here's a list of things I'm going to talk about. And so I just let the conversation roll into one into the other, because if this is going to be like a coffee date, if we are meeting each other at the coffee house with, with friends, you're not 
like getting all dressed up like I'm getting ready to meet my friend at the coffee house here's what we're gonna here's what we're gonna talk about or driving in the car to get there like okay and then I'm gonna talk about this I mean this is supposed to be just once a week and we sit down at the coffee at the coffee table at the coffee house and have a conversation so I try to I try to present myself as such so hopefully this is something you look forward to on Fridays let me know what you're doing to try to make the weekend feel a little bit different from the rest of the week since we're kind of just all in every day anyway I hope I hope this is part of it I mean for me although I'm on this end um, just really watching myself talk on screen with the responses that I receive from you guys and the feedback and the commentary on answering the questions that I pose and here's what I'm looking at or here's what I'm doing or here's what I like or here's my favorite thing. It really does feel like a conversation. So this is something for me to look forward to on Fridays, like getting dressed up and I'm going to the coffee house, just like life at, at normal. This is This is fun for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you're staying safe, being well, stay healthy, stay home, and I'll see you next time at the coffee house. A bientôt. Say, how many drinks have you had? This will make six martinis. All right. Will you bring me five more martinis? Leo, line them right up here. Yes, ma'am.